guys. For our lesson today, we are going to play for loop fun. And this is a dice game. So we are going to get together in pairs and we're going to roll dice and we're going to learn how to use for loops. So first we need to talk about what a for loop is because a for loop is different than kind of loops we've used before. So what do you remember about a loop? It's something that repeats over and over until you tell it to stop. A, a loop is something that repeats and you get to tell it when to stop, right? So we might have a loop and in CS Fundamentals we call it a repeat block, right? Mm -hmm. So we might repeat something five times and the thing that we repeat five times might be something like move forward. Now, when we repeat something five times, we go through, and it, it's kind of like it's keeping track one at a time. So it'll have a variable, if you remember that from when we were talking about um, the bracelets or the sun catchers. Then we can have a variable that starts out at zero times, and it'll go through, and it'll say one, and it'll go through and say two, three, four, and five, and then it'll be all done. So that's how this is going to work. But there's a more powerful loop out there that we're going to learn about today, and it's called the for loop. Now with a for loop, we get to choose where it starts. Maybe we want it to start at zero. Maybe we want it to start at three, <coughs> right? So we have a for loop. And then we have a variable or a counter of some kind. And we're going to say, for our counter, and we get to say where it starts. So where do we want our counter to start? Yeah. Start at 10. Let's have it start at 10. So from, we're going to have it start as equal to 10. And then, when do we want it to stop? So, at thirty. Okay. So when the counter is equal to thirty. Why did you write two equals? That's a very good question. So what I'm doing now is called pseudocode, and it's kind of like what a computer would use, but it's more Englishy. So uh, when I do this, it means set that equal to ten. When I do this, it means compare to see if it's equal to 10. So it's two different kinds of equals. And now what do we want to add by? Do we want to count by ones? Or do we want to count by something else? Five. Count by fives. That's awesome. So that's going to be our loop. And while we're running our for loop, put you put stuff in variables so that you can change what happens throughout your program and still use the same word to refer to whatever that number is going to be. Because we don't know at any given time what the value of this is going to be. We only know whatever that value is we need it. So for this we're going to say counter. Now are we actually going to say Counter! 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 No. no. This is kind of like chorus, where it means something different than what we're reading, right? So to start out the first time through, what are we actually going to say? Go ahead and shout it out. Five, ten. Oh, wait, wait. Where are we starting? Oh, fifteen. Okay. No, the first time through, we're going to say... Ten. And then the second time through... Fifteen. And then... Twenty. 25, 30, 35, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Oh, where do we stop? 30. There you go. Okay? So that's how a for loop works. It lets you choose your start point, your end point, and how much you count by. We call that the increment. Can you guys say increment? Increment. Increment. It's like increasing, right? But we're increasing something by the same amount over and over. 
And that's how we're going to play this game. Dang it. <laughs> OK. It is a dice game. So you've got this grid that you're going to play with. And you're going to play with a partner. And you're going to roll one dice. And you're going to find out what your starting number is by the value of the one dice. And then you're going to roll three dice, or the same die three times, and add them all up. And that's going to be your ending number. And then you'll roll to see how many you count by. You'll go through and you'll circle all the numbers as you go through how do you add them? by adding them all up and having the highest score. Yay. Yeah. What if your counting number can't add up to your ending number? Then you do the last counting number before you get to the ending number. Okay? All right? So let's try this and I'll come around and help on the first round. There are three rounds you get to play, and there's an example if you want to see how other people play it, okay? So you're going to do your first roll. Here, take this. Okay, so write a four there. And then make a little bracket around the four so you know that's where you're starting. There you go. And now you have to roll three times. Because you have to get a big number, a high number, to know what your ending number is. Two. So it's two plus four plus six. Two plus six plus four. So what's two plus six plus four? What's six plus four? What's ten plus two? Okay. So now do one this direction around the 12. So that's how far you get to go. Now you have to figure out how many you get to move by. So, so write your 12 here. Okay, you have to roll one more time. One. Ooh, that's a good roll. So you put a one there. So now, here, here's a pencil. So now circle four. And now circle every number, add one, add one, add one. And then you have to add all those up together, and that's your score for the round. Okay? This game is actually a little bit complicated. So it helps if you have a document camera where you can play around with your class and show them where to start and where to stop. It also helps to take the start number and make a parenthesis around it and the end number and make a parenthesis around it so that you can see clearly when you've gotten to your stopping point.